are in the famous George the Third Vineyard in Rutherford. It's a Bexopper Vineyard. And who are you? I am Sarah Francis, yeah. winemaker. Girls, it's it's hard to explain how we're taught in the world what we can be and what we can't be. It's a very, um, you know, we're taught to be at home and be nurturers, and there's nothing wrong with that. Everybody has at least one gift or talent that if they just really explore it, it's fear that holds you back. Yeah. It's fear that says, no, a girl can't make wine. You can't be in agriculture. You're never going to make any money at that. You don't have an education at that. What will people think? It's all those things that really hold us back. I was born in Dallas and raised in California, then um, Washington, Oregon, and then Michigan, and then my parents retired to Missouri. So I did have a great-grandmother, and that's kind of where the, my love of grapevine started. We didn't have um, anybody in our family making wine, but my great-grandmother had a little hobby section of her orchard and garden that she dedicated to growing grapevines. And I don't know if um, anybody watching has ever had an imaginary friend when they were little or has known anybody, but I did, and they were grapevines. And my parents told me that I would just come out to the section of my grandmother's garden and orchard and talk to this one section of grapevines. And I had them all named, and I sang to them. And I literally would go out there every morning and I would hang out there until the absolute sun went down and they forced me, dragging and kicking, to come back in the house. I basically made the decision through some mentors who said, Sarah, you've been doing this and you're doing well at home, but you need to go for it, leap, and go to Napa Valley and make wine. And I was like, oh, I can't do that. You know, I don't have any education. I don't have a winery. I don't have $20 million. I don't, I'll just, you know, make do here. And they were like, we refuse to let that happen to you. My dad gave me this quote, and I don't recall who actually said this, but it says, don't ask what the world needs. Instead, find what makes you come alive and go do that. Because the, what the world really needs is more people that have come alive. So in every one of us, we have this inner knowledge of what it is that makes us feel at home and at ease. It tasted a lot of fantastic wines and I always kind of knew what my favorites and they all had this name on the bottle. And so I sought out the owner of this vineyard, Andy Bextoffer, and people said, oh, he's never going to talk to you. And I go, what do you mean he's not going to talk to me? <laughs> well, first of all, you're not proven. Second of all, you can't afford his grapes. He doesn't need to sell them to you. He doesn't work with unknown people. It was just this whole litany of things of how it was never going to happen and I should not waste my time. I got his number and I called him up and he was out of the country at the time. And I basically said, listen, people tell me that uh, you won't sell any grapes to me and I can't afford them. And they're telling me all these things. But where I come from, we tell that to people's faces. So you can tell me now, but do it to my face. Give me the courtesy and the decency to call me back, sir. And a couple weeks passed, I didn't hear anything. So I thought, oh, well, maybe they were right, you know? And, uh, but he did, he called and he actually said, uh, where the hell is 573 area code? Because he's from Virginia. He has this really gentlemanly Southern accent. And I said, Missouri. And he said, well, I'll be damned. I have a vineyard named Missouri Hopper. What do you need, little girl? He said, you're pretty interesting. And he said, why do you want to make wine? And I said, well, quite frankly, because my soul refuses to let me do anything else and be happy. And so I have to. There's no question about this. I have to do this. And there's only one wine that I've ever fallen in love with. And it's wines that came from your vineyard. And I have that in my brain and that's the wine I'm going to make. And he said, well, I never met anybody like you, that's for sure. And yeah. I've, I've never seen anybody with the kind of passion that you have, the intensity that you have, and the commitment that you have. And um, he said, then, well, what do you want to do? How much wine do you want to make? I said, well, how much are the grapes? And he goes, well, if you have to ask, you can't afford it. And I was like, oh, well, I got my checkbook and I showed him how much money I had. And he goes, that's not enough. <laughs> And, I, and he started talking to me about white wines. He said, I want to make a Chardonnay. And I, I literally started crying because I was so angry at this point. And I said, quite frankly, sir, don't insult me and try to convince me to do something else in wine. I came to you because I want to make Cabernet Sauvignon. And he said, I'll tell you what, if you'll make a barrel of Chardonnay and a barrel of Cabernet, we'll help get you started that way. And I don't ever do this. 
This is you. I don't do this. Everything you heard was right, but there's something about you that reminds me of when I started. And somebody took me under their wings and I was willing to learn and I have this feeling that you're willing to learn. And we get you in front of some mentors and I'd really like to see how you progress because I'm convinced that if anybody can make it and be um, successful in the wine business, it is you. Yeah. And I just cried and he, that's when he brought me here. And he said, this is the vineyard that I think you should start in for your Cabernet Sauvignon and expand from, from this vineyard. And um, when we stepped on this ground, I was, my, I was smitten and my, I just melted. Wine is a Zen sport. And as long as you find wines that can make you um, slow down and lose yourself in the moment, you can then begin to appreciate what the differences are amongst wine. And it really is just you communicating with the wine through appreciation. That's all I ask anybody to do. Yeah. Take time with what's in your glass to appreciate what it's telling you. Don't worry about if, you, if it's wrong or if it's right. or Just what is it telling you? What is its story? And you'll begin to see the nuances. And all these vines that you see after my three rows, those all belong to Schrader. Um, Thomas River Brown is their winemaker and he's been winemaker of the year before and he's the first winemaker, it's the first wine to ever get perfect 100 scores from every critic on the planet basically. So All the same. Right next, right next to your, right next to your right, grape is right. that kind of high bar. Yeah, yes, exactly. So I put a lot of feet to ground here and um, there's this passion and um, to exceed that bar. Everything is work, but it doesn't seem like work because if you're an entrepreneur and you're doing what you love and where your joy comes from, and you're surrounding yourself with people that are elevating you and challenging you and bringing you up further, then you're gonna find that um, you get an energy from it where you don't get exhausted like other people. You're gonna get tired, but it doesn't wipe you out like a normal job would. And it actually makes your brain work faster and harder and you'll come up with a hundred million more ideas. So I told my kids, I said, I used to tell them, but you know, they, my son wanted to be a chef or a comedian. And I said, well, you can be the funniest cooking neurosurgeon there ever was. You know, that's kind of what I told them. But then when I decided to pursue my own passion, I said, well, wait a minute, let me just take that back. You go and do, you, sh you become a chef. You commit yourself to excellence in the culinary world. You find the one thing about it that just makes you sing. And you will become a master and an expert and people will seek you out for that advice. And you'll be entrepreneurial. You'll have more energy. You'll work harder at it than the average person. And you will find a way to make money at it. That is the beauty of true being a true entrepreneur that has found their niche.